What on earth is that for? Any ideas? There's a label on the back, but I wrote that myself. It says 2005, and that's when I got it from. And I'm no wiser. 70 years later, it rolls nicely. But that action with these leaf springs like this is extraordinary. And it does that when you push it in and out. So I'll leave that with you as a, a what's it. Can you pop, let me know what you think it does? And have you got one in your collection? And what does it do? <laughs> I've got several things from 2005, which are very nice indeed. I want to show a little potpourri of them. This is a wonderful one. It's, um, it's a glass prism, but with a hidden secret in it, which is not apparent until you do something to it. So all I've got to do is hold it up like that, about there. And now to make it work, make something appear, I've actually got to breathe on it with my breath. Here we go. And instantly something appears. Two of clubs. And it fades away fairly quickly because it's warm into nothing at all. There's a tiny bit of etching on that done with some um, fluoric acid, I think it is. So The two of clubs appears and then it slowly evaporates and disappears as the mist from my breath evaporates and it's nothing left. And two others on the other side I'll won't show now, but it's a wonderful piece of, of, of work that it's it's etched on I think they say with fluoric acid, but discovered about a hundred years ago. Then there's this little creature here, which is um a monopolar motor. There's an ordinary looking AA battery there, there's some strong neodymium magnets each end, and then they have a thing which does a dead short in it, as it were, and you give it a little, a little push, and away it goes. It's a motor, it's doing that physically. It's not going downhill, it's actually going along completely along the flat. It's due to the fact that there's quite a current flows through this, and with a little bit of the um, left or right handed rule for electromagnetic induction, it then rolls extraordinarily. Give it a tiny bit more of a push, there we are. And it would go right across the table. Very interesting. Monopolar motor, several versions of it, but that's one of the neatest ones I've ever seen, I think. So that's nice. There's a charming little magnetic toy here, this little creature here. He's he's, he's got sweet, he pops up like that, he's got a face, but he doesn't want to pop up like that until something happens happens. How do I make it pop up? Well you just put it on a metal surface. Now here I've got a, a bottle cap, but that's metal. So when I put it on there. It hold it like that, it stays down, but when I let go with my fingers, it pops up. My goodness! There's a magnet being pulled down, and with cantilevers, it's being pushed up. It won't do that when it's off that. It just stays down and stays down, and doesn't do anything else. So, put it on here, hold it slightly, and then up it pops. Very neat, very clever use of magnetic force, and a tiny little magnetic trigger underneath. Very neat, lovely. Another very neat little thing here is this little thing, face changer. It's got five sides, as you can see. It's a little, a little one, two, one, two, three, four, five. This is right. And each of both of the um, levels have got the five. They've got a hat at the top. They've got the eyes and the nose in the middle. And they've got the mouth and the jaw underneath. So when you turn them like this, look what happens. You get different shapes and different faces. And I worked out that um, five by five by five is 125 different faces. That's a complete face with the hat, with the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And it's a click, click, click for each one, and very bizarre one there. So it's like those little magic books where you've got face changing creatures. But this is made of plastic and it's got a nice little spring inside it to make each face stay in place like that. Very nice thing for kids to play with. And the very, very bizarre cartoony, cartoony faces, which I think is charming. So a nice, a nice bit of um, play value for children. And another one with a bit of play value is this one here, which is a straw, a straw dolly? Well, not really, it's just straws, drinking straws, the one they stopped making now, which are plastic. When you pull the cord, this is what happens. She crosses her arm in front of her, look at that, isn't that clever? Very clever, just done by strings going through the straws and then using the straws natural almost elastic joins here where they've cut through part of the straw and when you pull it it behaves like a little um like like a like a little mannequin or something, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful? Oh look and the hands are coming up as well. So a marvellous little puppets that's um made out of straws, flexible straws too. Very nice. I don't know who the artist was. And another one which is read to me a little magic trick, but I treat it as a bit of fun, really. 
and it's matches. Well, I have to show you the matches first. The ma there's, the, there's the matches, but if I push it from the other way, see what happens. As I push out, the other drawer underneath comes out. Oh, goodness. So let's push him in like that, and that comes out back that way. And then I push it. No, I don't do that. I push it with this one here, and look what happens. Well, the answer, of course, is that there's, oh, there's a string, a tiny little string going between them, which is holding it up. There we are. That's holding it up. And that makes the thing work. And it's just a beautiful little bit of um, fun for the children to play with and pretend they're be being a magician. Doing that back and forward like that. Matches, empty box, full box, empty box, full box, and so on. Couldn't be simpler. Came in a little, a little packet, and it's a beauty, I think. That I also got at this time, 2005, a very, very nice spinning top. What makes this work so well is there's a very heavy, almost lead-like, I think, probably is lead, base to it. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a, it's got a lot of inertia. And with the top of the Eiffel Tower, when you spin it, it's beautiful because it just goes on and on and on. It's very, very well made. It's perfectly good dynamics to it. It's extremely well constructed, so it doesn't wobble about at all. Tiny bit of wobble actually at the top of the Eiffel Tower, and it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And thinking about Eiffel Towers, here's something that I've shown before, which is what they call a cherished or perished item. It's, it, it was a three dimensional imitation of Paris, the centre of Paris, with it sticking up. But this is about 20 years ago, and rubber, as you know, perishes, and after a while it's, it's gone. Now, all I have to do is put it in my collection of things that are, are, are perished, but I can't throw them away really. But what reminded me about that is something I did find in that 2005 case, which is a frog made of rubber. I thought, oh dear, it won't have any life in it. But no, it's okay, actually. It's, it pulled in a different direction. It hasn't perished. But something strange inside, because it's supposed to croak like a frog. If I squeeze it very gently, it will sort of um, bulge out in there. So it should croak. And um, 17 years ago, it did croak. Now this, it does this. Am I barking mad, or is that the sound of a dog yapping? That's a dog, for goodness sake. Have you ever come across a barking frog before? Goodness. Now I've got to go through my collection and see if I can find a dog which croaks, and then put the two together and see what you think. But that's definitely a woof, 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 woof. Well, things in my collection change the most dramatically, but that's one of the funniest I've ever come across. If you come across a barking frog, let me know. Huh.